Yuna, you should at least eat some breakfast. I brought you some porridge Sandy made. <sighs> Louise and Jessica are worried too. And not just them, the entire branch campus is concerned for you. Ourselves included, of course. Why? Why didn't you two go with Instructor Rain? Didn't you want to go? Of course we did, but we didn't think it was right to leave you behind. <laughs> you may already be aware, but I was originally meant to attend the main campus. I would follow the same path as the other members of the Vander family in serving the Imperial family. I never once doubted that I would one day be given the honor of being appointed aide to Prince Cedric. However, last fall, the government suddenly decided to relieve the Vander family of its duties. The honor of protecting the royal family should not be monopolized by the nobility, they claimed. My brother was then shipped off to the outskirts, my father and uncle buried in military busywork, and I suddenly found my life's purpose gone. And so I made a rash decision and switched to the branch campus at the last minute. <sighs> Kurt. To be perfectly honest, I barely knew a thing about Crossbell before this trip. At first, I thought being annexed into such a powerful country as Erebonia would be a relief to Crossbell citizens. However, pride in one's home isn't that simple. Compared to the helplessness you and the people of Crossbell must feel, my troubles seem like nothing. Once I realized that, I decided I couldn't leave you here alone. I have trouble understanding why you're feeling like this, Yuna. I never had a hometown, nor was I born from biological parents. I suspect I was created so as to experience as little emotion as possible. What? <laughs> but hearing you last night, I experienced a strange feeling in my chest. Then, Instructor Reen asked if I was okay leaving you here alone, and... That is the reason I am still here. <sighs> Ali... I... Unlike you two, I don't have a good reason for staying behind. I know what I should do. Regardless of what's going on, I just need to grit my teeth and keep moving. I know that, but... My reason... is just my own selfishness. A year and a half ago, the Empire took over Crossbell without any bloodshed. Of course, Calvert wasn't about to let that stand. Their military strength is about even with Erebonius. Calvert's armored aviation divisions are full of highly mobile tanks and gunships. They invaded Crossbell to try and drive out the Imperial Army. The Imperial Army held them off with their Panzer Soldats, but during the first few battles, there were a number of gunships that broke through the front lines. Because the occupation was so sudden, most of the citizens were in a panic. Most people fled the city, hoping they'd be away from the fighting in rural towns or remote mining villages. We had the same idea, and tried to at least get Ken and Nana to safety in Armorica village. I had just gotten back from the police academy, and got an acquaintance to help drive us to the village. That's when it happened. On the way there, we encountered a Calbardian gunship. It was hit by Imperial fire, and I'm sure the pilot started to panic. It started firing at us, even though we were clearly not a military transport. Our driver tried to maneuver around it, but the vehicle took a hit and we were all thrown out of it. It was frustrating. I felt so powerless. All my training at the police academy didn't help one bit. I threw myself on top of Ken and Nana, swearing I'd make sure at least they survived. And then... A gray shadow swooped down on us. 
It looked like a giant statue of a knight had come to life. With one swing of its sword, it cut off the gunship's rotor, letting it land a ways away. And just like that, we were saved. Are you alright? Is anyone injured? I heard the voice of a young man coming from inside the giant knight. I found out later. That was the first official mission of the man now known as the Ashen Chevalier. I've wanted to thank him this whole time, but I couldn't. I couldn't do anything to save my family. I felt so powerless, and I ended up pinning my frustration on him. And that's what led to this. I see. I understand now. Yuna, you just want Instructor Reem to acknowledge you. <laughs> I think I'm the same. When I accompanied him on his missions, I was tasked with monitoring and supporting him. But he treated me like a child, kept risking himself to protect me, and took on all the burdens himself. I felt so useless. I'm no different. All I've wanted is for him to recognize my sword skills. I know I still have far to go, but I feel like what happened in Sutherland helped me grow at least a little. Yuna, I believe this is your opportunity to grow. Huh? Instructor Reen left you a message. I'll play it now. Yuna, the members of the Special Support Section are, without a doubt, heroes. I can't help but think each one of them are truly great people. Him included. But are you okay with simply looking up to them forever? Right now, they're trapped, unable to protect their home. So who's going to be the one to protect Crossbell in their absence? But are you okay with simply looking up to them forever? Right now, they're trapped, unable to protect their home. So who's going to be the one to protect Crossbell in their absence? Seriously? He's always... so... Hm. I know that already. Does he really think I need to hear any of that crap from him? From the sound of it, we're ready to go now. We already have the location, so... Come on, we wasted enough time here. Let's get going already. Huh? Muse and Dash? What are you doing here? Got permission from Randolph to tag along. As for me, I asked Instructor Toa to assign me as your support. I would have come too if I were able. Me too. If only I was able to fight! Louise and Jessica are one thing, but... How long were you two listening?! <laughs> 